Hey, good morning. I'm so glad to see you guys back here again with me today for the Vacation Bible School. Is it, it's hard to believe it's Wednesday already. The week's gone by so fast, and it's been so good that you guys have been here with us. And we've been following the journey of Jacob, and today we see not the end of his story, but the next chapter of Jacob's story. And I hope you're here with me today as we explore that and find out just what happens to him because he's going to meet some very important people today. And you'll find out about that during our Bible time. Hey, um, as we've been going through the week, I hope you've been collecting uh, food, food items and uh, pay attention to where you're gonna have to drop them off and collect them. And make sure you work hard for, uh, for your parents and for your neighbors and for your friends so they can help uh, collect even more food. So let's begin our journey today. Uh, in prayer, and let's have some fun. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you so much for this time together that you're here with us, and that we get to explore what happens with Jacob and on his journey to faith. We thank you, Lord, in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, have a great day, and I'll see you in just a little bit. Okay, another song that we're going to do for you guys is The Wise Man Built His House Upon the Rock. And this is to remember where our real foundation, the real safe place, the real strong place in your life is. It's on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Talita is going to explain the motions for this song. And you guys do these motions at home. <laughs> so we have rock, sand, flat, house, and build. And... Rain, blessings, prayers, and Lord blood, Jesus Christ. And Lord, Je Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. We ready for this? The wise man built his house upon the rock. Now do the motions with these guys. They don't want to do it by themselves. Here we go. <laughs> the wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. Then the rains came down, and the floods came up. The rains came down, and the floods came up. The rains came down, and the floods came up, and the house on the rock stood firm. So who else was there? Oh, the foolish man, right? Yeah. Here we go, the foolish man. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. Well, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the sand went splat. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come down. And then what happens? The prayers go blessings, up. The, prayers, the blessings yeah. all come down as the prayers go up, right? Yeah. Okay. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings go down as the prayers go up. Blessings go down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord. Great, guys. Okay. That was fun. Okay, so the Lord has trusted us to be in his family and also kind of like to be in his army, to be in the people that really stand for him and really live for him. So to act out these motions... You're going to do it with us, but Andrea is going to explain what the motions are. Where should I go? So remember the, you can just stand, come, why don't you come over here? Here? No, right in front of that microphone. Okay, uh, right, right here. Here? here. Uh, so the motions for um, this song are um, march in the infantry, um, ride on the cow. Very shoot the artillery, fly or the enemy, and but I am in the Lord's army, and yes, sir. Okay, good enough. Okay, good going. Okay, here we go. So I may never march in the infantry. The 
artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! All right. Isn't that fun, guys? Yeah. All right. Hey kids, uh, welcome to VBS. Hey, my name's Marvin the Monkey, Marvin the Monkey that is, and I'm, I'm, they asked me to give me the verse of the day. Today's verse of the day is Nehemiah 9.17. You are a forgiving God, <laughs> gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Nehemiah 9.17. This tells us that God forgives us, even if we get in trouble. And, well, I'm a monkey, so I get into a lot of trouble. But God still forgives me. He wants to forgive us. Have a great day at VBS, kids. See you later. Fun fact number 50. The largest land animals are elephants. There are only three different species of elephants. The African savanna elephant, the African forest elephant, and the Asian elephant. African elephants are taller and heavier than Asian elephants. As elephants get older, their tusks keep growing, so an elephant with really long tusks is usually a very old elephant. The most special things about elephants, like their awesome tusks, are the same things that make them vulnerable to bad people. Just like gorillas, elephants need our help. Hello, my name is Annette. Today, we will discover what happens when two brothers, Jacob and Esau, meet again. The last time they had seen each other was about 20 years ago and Esau was very angry and wanted to kill Jacob because Jacob had tricked him and gotten all of his father's blessings. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're going to fight? Or will there be peace? Let us find out in Bible Stories. Jacob was traveling with his family and he had two wives, two servants, 11 sons, one daughter, and many flocks of sheep, herds of cattle, goats, camels, donkeys. You get the picture. He had a lot. He knew that they were going to go through a town where his brother Esau lived. He sent some men ahead of him to give his brother Esau a message. Tell my brother, I am your servant. I have been staying with your uncle and have remained there till now. I have cattle, donkeys, sheep, goats, and servants. God has changed my heart. Please forgive me. Have you ever needed courage to ask someone for forgiveness? The man ran ahead to find Esau and gave him the message. Then they went back to Jacob. We went to your brother Esau. He's coming to meet you, and 400 men are coming with him. Do you think Jacob was nervous? God, you've kept all your promises to me. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown me. Save me, I pray, for my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me, and also the mothers with their children. The next morning, he selected his best goats, his best sheeps, his best camels with their young 
with cows and bulls and donkeys. And he put them in the care of his servants, each herd by itself, and said to his servants, Go ahead of me. Keep some space between the herds. When my brother Esau meets you and asks, Who do you belong to? And where are you going? And who owns all these animals? Tell him. They belong to your servant brother Jacob. He sent them ahead as a gift for you and is also coming behind us. Jacob's servants went ahead of him with the animals. Jacob sent his wives and children across the stream and he went back to camp. Jacob was at camp all alone and a man wrestled with him till morning. The man saw that he could not overpower him. Jacob was stubborn. Let me go, for it is morning. I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God, with humans, and have overcome. The man then blessed Jacob before he left. Jacob knew he saw God face to face that night, and God protected him again. Jacob got up and started walking. He looked up, and there was Esau, coming with his 400 men. So he gathered his wives and children in a group. He went on ahead of them, bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they cried. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you? They are the children God has graciously blessed me with. Then the women and children bowed down to Esau. I forgive you, my brother. I am so happy to see you and your family. God changed Jacob to be less proud and more humble and to be able to ask for forgiveness. What should you do when you have done something wrong to someone? What should you do when someone asks forgiveness from you? This is a dragonfly. Dragonflies only live about six months and when they're small, they live in the water before they get wings. Dragonflies are really good at flying and they can go up, down, or hover like a helicopter. Hi everyone, welcome back to VBS. This is the third week and today we're going to be doing, we're gonna be tying knots to, and doing some activities with them. This week, the Bible verse is from Acts 28, and it says, The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, This man must be a murderer, for though he escaped from the, the sea, the goddess justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effect. So in this Bible verse, Paul avoids getting bit by that snake. And that is what we are going to attempt in our first activity. Um, there's no problem if you do get bit um, in the activity. So. Let's get into it. The first activity that we're going to start with is the snake bite activity, which is with the, um, the viper and Paul. So you're going to take your rope or your jump rope, your string, and you're going to lay it down on the ground like this. If you're going to stand on one foot, you can start with either your right or your left. You're going to jump back and forth from either side. And you're going to try and do that five times in a row. So you're going to do that with your right foot right now. Like this. And then if you do that, you're going to switch to your left foot 
and you're going to do the exact same thing. So I'll give you time to do that right now. Okay, you put a pause video there if you needed that time. So the second one, the second activity with the rope that we're going to do is you, you're going to hold it like you're going to start to jump rope, but you're not actually going to jump rope. And this time you're going to do the exact same thing, but with the rope in the air, you can do two feet at once, or you can just do one foot at a time. And you're going to try and do that 10 times in a row. So you could either do it with one foot or you could do it with two feet. Okay. So there's that one. And now Nate is going to show you how to tie this knot for the next activity. All right, so this is called a square knot. It's a pretty simple knot, not too hard to tie and pretty strong. So what you're going to do first, you take the two ends of the rope and you're going to hold them up next to each other. You're going to take the right end and you're going to cross it over the left end so you have an X right here. And then with your X, you're going to take the left side, which is previously the right side. You're going to fold it under and around. So now you have these two bits sticking up here and they're wrapped together right here. And then now you take your left side right here, you cross it over your right to make another X, and then you take your right side previously the left side, fold it down into this hole down here, and then pull it through, and you're gonna have a shape kind of like this, and all you have to do is grab all four ends and just pull, and there you go, that's the square knot. Now that we have this knot, here this square knot um it makes a uh, like a circle and you're going to put that on the ground this is the second activity and you can either use this as a fire or like an island that you're stranded on for because of all this shipwreck so you're going to stand in it and you could uh get things like um, if you're outside, you could get like sticks or rocks, um, and you could place them outside, and you can try to, without stepping out of this island or the fire, these could be your materials to make the fire, or they could be things that you're trying to get that are on the island, off the island, and without stepping outside of this circle, you're going to try and pick them up, and right now it's not a very accurate representation because I didn't place anything there but there's like a leaf right here and there's pine needles which might help you um so that is that was the last activity it would probably be more fun with you guys um but so this activity is meant to show that no matter how uh, without activities or necessities that you are, God is always there and he's always here to help you. Just like he helped Paul with the Viper and he helped him when he got stranded on the island. There were people there to help him. So that's all. So today we learned about Paul, his adventure when he gets stranded on the island of Malta. And God helped Paul when Paul, when the viper was on his arm, and um, he gave him the help he needed, just like he gives us the help we need. So we're going to close in prayer. So if you could join me. Dear God, we thank you for all that you do to help us and let us succeed. You guide us through the dark when we don't know what to do, and you give us reason. Thank you for the opportunity to have fun and learn about you now in this odd time. In your name we pray, amen. I hope you guys had fun, um, make it interesting, and I will see you guys next week with another activity. Bye. Fun fact number 22. Cats have an excellent sense of hearing and smell, but their eyesight is even better, even in the dark. Cats can see six times better in the dark than humans can. Another fun fact about cats is that they sleep for 13 to 14 hours per day. 
And the reason why they sleep so much is that they can save energy by sleeping. And that cats are made to hunt, so hunting takes a lot of energy, and by sleeping a lot, they can save energy and be really good at hunting. Also, cats are flexible and really good at jumping, which helps them catch their food even better. Their tails also help them balance when they're jumping. Another fun fact about cats is the reason they play so much with each other and pretend that they're fighting is to help them get better at hunting before they're adults. There are 500 million pet cats around the whole world. Do you have a cat? Do you know anybody that has a cat? Summer brings some amazing opportunities for sky gazing. Recently, there was something called a thunder moon, a summer full moon that glows a bit red. Jupiter, the biggest planet in our solar system, was close by. Lucas set up his telescope on the beach. Then the moon went from this to this. We could also see not only Jupiter, but four of its moons. If you don't have a telescope, don't worry. With a simple pair of binoculars, or even these, you can see lots of cool stuff. Here's Venus on our evening walk. And you can see lots of stars and constellations like the Big Dipper. Recently, two American astronauts successfully launched in an American rocket to go live and do science on the International Space Station. With a free app, you can find out when the station is visible where you live. Then walk outside and look up. It only takes about five minutes to cross the entire sky above our house. Did you know you can time travel with the stars? Did you ever want to get in a time machine and see what things looked like a long time ago? Well, you can, sort of. Light takes time to travel from an object to our eyes. We don't think about this because light travels so fast that we see everything pretty much immediately. But distances in space are so huge that it takes light some time to travel to our eyes here on Earth. So when we look up, we are actually gazing into the past. When we look at the North Star, for example, we are seeing what it looked like about 400 years ago. That's when Galileo was alive. How cool is that? Many people in the Bible, including King David, were inspired when they looked up at the heavens. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. It is when we look up at a night sky that we can really understand that God is big and we are small. Yet he created us and loves each of us. So on the next clear night, go outside, look up, and enjoy God's handiwork.
This is a white-breasted nuthatch. Like most birds, if it sees a reflection in its window, it tries to attack it. This bird flew straight into the window trying to attack its own reflection. It was in the garden and we went out to help it. So my dad picked it up with a gloved hand, which you should not do without a glove because their claws are very sharp. And we watched it as it tried to wake up after being knocked unconscious. It eventually got up and flew away. Hey kids, uh, welcome to VBS. Hey, my name's Marvin the Monkey, Marvin the Monkey that is, and I'm, I'm, uh, they asked me to give you the verse of the day. Today's verse of the day is Nehemiah 9.17. You are a forgiving God, <laughs> gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Nehemiah 9.17. This tells us that God forgives us, even if we get in trouble. And, well, I'm a monkey, so I get into a lot of trouble. But God still forgives me. He wants to forgive us. Have a great day, VBS kids. See you later. Hey, good afternoon, guys. I hope you have as much fun as I had this week. It's hard to believe, but we're at the end of the week, and we've only got one more week of Vacation Bible School to go. Kind of sad, aren't you? But we get, I hope you've learned a lot, and we've gotten to watch a journey of Jacob. And today, we, we got the opportunity to watch as Jacob was transformed and became Israel. Just like we saw Saul become Paul, here we got to see Jacob become Israel. And with that transformation, God renamed him. But in that renaming, Jacob became so much more. And he really started to follow God in a new and fantastic way. So I'm glad you're here with us and you've been journeying with us in this, on this transformational path. And... We see how God used the trickster, Jacob, to found a nation, the nation of Israel. That's where we get the name. So we also got to see redemption, how Esau forgave him, how Jacob learned humility and how to follow God. Follow him so well that God blessed him with a new name. God blesses all of us. And I hope you're discovering new and wonderful things all week long with us. And I'm glad you're here at the end of three weeks. We've got one more to come next Monday. I hope you're here with us when we go on that journey. And I thank all of you. And I know you're doing great things for God. Let's pray. Thank you, God. Watch over all these children today and bless them and transform them and move them forward. Give them your strength and your compassion. Give them a full measure of your presence. But most important, Lord, give them the assurance that you love them and you hold them close, just as you love Jacob, even when he was doing wrong. You love all of us and you transform us and you sustain us and bless us. Oh, Lord, help us, and we thank you. In your son's name, amen. Well, hello, VBS kids. Chris and I, I'm John, this is Chris. We are very happy to be with you, and we're going to do some songs that you can sing along with, so we hope that you sing along. Now, this one is a famous song, and it works with the title of your program, which is Discover God's World, and our God has the whole world in his hands. So sing with us about different things that God has in his hands. So first, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. The little tiny baby, he's got the little tiny baby. In his hands, he's got the little tiny baby. In his hands, he's got the little tiny baby. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. 
In his hands he's got you and me, brother. In his hands he's got you and me, brother. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. He also has to have you and me, sister. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands he's got you and me, sister. In his hands he's got you and me, sister. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got everybody here. In his hands he's got everybody here. In his hands he's got everybody here. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. And he's got the whole weather, he's got the wind and the rain and the sun and the moon. He's got the wind and the rain. In his hands he's got the wind and the rain. In his hands he's got the wind and the rain. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the sun and the moon. In his hands he's got the sun and the moon. In his hands he's got the sun and the moon. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. One more time. He's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole wide world. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. Philip is going to tell us about this song and the kind of motions that you should all make. Okay, so um, this song is called Alleluia, and when we stand up, you stand up, and when we sit down, you sit down, and at the end we will go, Alleluia! All right. Okay, so we'll see how good everybody is on this one, huh? Those guys that are watching. Okay, here we go. First we do this really slowly. Alleluia, 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 praise the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Alleluia, praise the Lord, Alleluia, praise the Lord, Alleluia, praise the Lord. Do a little faster. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. Think we can do it faster than that? Yeah. Okay, here we go. We'll try one more, a faster one. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. Even faster, you think, is possible? Sure, yeah, Okay, maybe. we'll give it a whirl. Here we go. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah.